Hi, Mike Anderson here. We're interviewing people who are members of the uh, Berks County Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And we have a, a distinguished gentleman with us today, Bob Wagner. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure uh, to be here. The, great. I mean, tell me, tell me a little bit about your musical history. Uh, do, uh, are you from Reading? Is that where you started? Yeah. Yeah, I've played in and around Berks County you know, all my life. I started uh, playing guitar. I was the like 13 year old that started messing around with the guitar. Uh, I lived in Plowville at the time, so mm -hmm. it was just, I wasn't in the community where there was any music stuff going on. Uh, but as years went on that, I eventually got into a band and, and got going and um, played my first bar gig, as I remember, in like 1978 or so, uh, 79 when I was uh, 18 or 19 years old. And what were you playing? What instrument were you playing back then? I, I played bass guitar bass. then, um, you know, through my high school yeah. years and, yeah. and right after. Uh, got to the point where, and always messed around with the guitar, but got to the point where we wanted a keyboard player in the band, and I had a couple years of piano lessons in second or third grade, and there was nobody to play keyboard, so I jumped into the keyboard role as well. Mm -hmm. and then, Bounce back through all three of those instruments. Sort of. What was the the name of that band? Do you remember the the, the first band that you uh, started with? Um, <laughs> <laughs> my first high school band was called Stone Death, uh, because you know it was 1974, oh, yeah. and we were trying to be edgy. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. <laughs> well, that was edgy enough. But uh, now you played with various groups since then. Has it been on bass yeah. and keyboards? Or yes, <laughs> both. Okay, yes, <laughs> and some guitar work as well. Um, yeah, uh, um, it's interesting. This Berks County community, and I'm sure there's other communities like it. Um, but we have something in Berks County nobody else has, or. There, few other communities have and it's fire halls fire hall companies to play at where are you playing i'm playing at the fire company yeah. and um done some traveling around and you know uh there's other communities there's other areas uh where you say well my first job was in a fire company what did they do pull the trucks out and you guys played no the, the social quarters here in berks county is something that's kind of uh particular to our area yeah um so yeah the first band started playing you know in, in a couple clubs in in uh and fire companies, huh. and it wasn't until uh, early 80s till I got into a band that got some traction, mm -hmm. and that band was called Blaze. Oh. Um, and that's when you'd go and play a gig, and they'd actually call you back the next month or two months later to play the gig nice, again. Nice. And uh, from there, I went into a band called Captive, and we really got some traction then, and uh, you know had a bit of a circuit build up and. And yeah. a uh, regular gig schedule. Yeah, yeah. Do, uh, are any of these musicians still around and playing? Oh, or? sure. Yeah. In, in Blaze, I played with Marty Hill, uh -huh. um, who's you know a, a big guy on on every music scene. Uh, Danny Thompson and uh, uh, Dwayne Schneck were in uh, Captive. Yeah. Uh, Tim O'Boyle. Yeah, those guys are still playing. Danny's playing with the group I'm playing with. That's right. And he's yeah. singing Frank Sinatra and Michael Bublé. You know, you would never yeah. think that. that <laughs> but he's great. he's great. Oh, yeah, he's a natural. His whole family is, you know, his brothers and nephew are naturals and, yeah. and just, you know, could go with it. Now, you mentioned the fire halls. I mean, when I started playing, which is several years before you did, <laughs> uh, we had a lot, I think we had a lot more places to play back that the, all the, the pools in the summer would have uh, right. outdoor events you know you go from one pool to another you had a lot of the high schools and and um, junior highs would hire us of course it wasn't a lot of money in that but we got exposure that way and the fire halls was a, a different thing at that point those were for the older bands you know as a young band we started playing a lot of these things but I don't think that exists that much anymore uh, somewhere so now the fire halls are the place to play. They're right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there were so many in the late 70s through the 80s, I'll say, there were so many clubs to play at and so many fire halls. And, and you really could put a circuit together and yeah. um, you know establish yourself in a half a dozen places and, and just play constantly. And uh, no, that doesn't exist anymore no. to the degree it did then. No. But it was a good learning, uh, the music business part of it. Um, I learned, you know, probably in my mid twenties or so, that it didn't matter how good. Well, it did matter how good the band was, but just as important as how good the band was was what material you were playing, and 
you could uh, be doing a really good Genesis song, a really neat Genesis song, yeah. and everybody would sit there on their hands. Uh, <laughs> but you play Brown Eyed Girl, and the dance floor would be filled, and and you know, and that was the place to learn those kind of things oh, about yeah. uh, how the entertainment business works, even in a local level like ours. Yeah, and I've been on both sides. I've been hiring for clubs and the hiree for clubs. <laughs> and yeah, there is, uh, you know, you have to make some money in the clubs by getting bands in. And, right. And right. if the bands don't draw for you, there's no reason to do it. Uh, I don't know if the money flowed more freely back then or, or times are getting tough right now. But uh, uh, I mean, now the you were a member of the, the local Hall of Fame, which is an honor, you know, to be, to be, uh, you know, appreciated by our audience. Oh, it really is. And, uh, has has the uh, you played at one of the uh, events that they had? There. I did, I did. Um, I was in a band called Radio Days, um, and w two of the members that were in Radio Days were in a band called Steel in mm -hmm. their formidable years, and uh, and uh, Mike Kurowski, you know, sure. Uh, promoted or or wanted to get Steel into the Hall of Fame, and it worked out. And uh, the keyboard player, Jeff Hafer, wasn't available to do the gig. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've done a lot of freelance stuff in, in recent years. So I sat in and, and played keyboards for Steel. And um, it was great. It was a great opportunity. Uh, I saw Steel back in the early 80s. Uh, so it was a, a great opportunity to step into that position, uh, play with some incredible musicians, mm -hmm. um, Dave Cullen. Play. Sure. That was his first band, Steel. Uh, so it was a yeah. great opportunity to, to. Was Nita Slater was in Nita that band? Slater was associated with the band, or she was in the band, Back in the and she was going days. to do the the show with us, but uh, she had some health issues with a, That's right. um, like a, a chest cold or something, and it yeah. never cleared up, you know, during that time frame. So she wasn't. Able she was an integral part of that band, if I recall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so and, was Dave, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Nita is such a treasure. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, she was on circuit bands in the 80s and, I and think 90s. She still and, and plays and still plays with, groups, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it gave you this, uh, gave you an opportunity to meet up with some old friends and, uh, you know, kind of regenerate oh, some of the really memories. Did. Yeah, um, so four of us um, were at the last concert at the. Uh, like the a magical history tour. Magical history yeah. tour. Yeah. Four of us from Radio Days were there in three different projects. So it was really neat to, uh, you know, and plus all the other musicians you yeah. know, from the area. Uh, I can't say enough good things about the uh, that show. Um, you know, to have, I don't know how many bands were there, 12 or 14 or uh, a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. I, uh, the sound crew had a lot to do with that. Sure. Between the acts, you know, getting things set up. But uh, it went very smoothly. Oh, it, it was, I never played a multi-band gig that went as smooth as that one yeah. did. And, uh, and just, you know, reconnecting with everybody and visiting with everybody, it was a, it was a really great day. That's great, yeah. Now, um, there was a lot of people from our era that were that showed up at those events. Um, and uh, what, what kind of suggestions do you have to make for young musicians now that are uh, going out and kind of establishing the same kind of uh, rapport that we have with our musicians? Can it be done? I think so. I think we, um, as you said, you know, spanning the years that we grew up um, yeah, with this local music scene, mm -hmm. I think we had the heyday. Um, I think it was a really great time um, that it's not as big as it was then. Maybe someday it'll grow to that extent again. But advice to, to young musicians would be go out and do it. Just start playing and take every gig you can and learn everything you can. And yeah. um, there's no school to go to. There's no classes to go to to learn how to be in a rock band. So um, I think you have to get in there, make the mistakes, uh, figure out what works, what doesn't work. And Yeah, I've heard some interesting things. And in like I said, I go back and you go back. Um, but I've heard things from younger performers who are not young by today's age. <laughs> saying, I used to come and see you play at certain things. So I think getting out and seeing other people play, too, as much as you can. Oh, certainly. Um, I mean, maybe yeah. the fire halls, it's a little difficult because, you know, age restrictions. There's, yeah. You know, there, I know, there's not a lot of uh, outdoor battle of the bands anymore. Right. Like they, they used to be back right. in the old days. So, you know, if you find the opportunities, of course, there's a lot of opportunities of seeing things on, on YouTube and 
We're recording this in 2010, by the way, in case you look through the archives and wonder what we're talking about. Uh, yeah, 2010 was a little different than 1965 when I was at play and then 70 <laughs> when you were in 74 when you were playing. But uh, yeah, there are opportunities. Now, this you're not a full-time musician as far as how you make your uh, your salary. And, and no, uh, no. Uh, you, you, what is your uh, full-time job? Uh, oh, I, I own a company called Restore Property Care, mm -hmm. and we reseal goat driveways and we uh, clean ductwork. Wow, um, it's a um, you know home services business. Now this may be a stretch though. How does your musical influence, you know, how does that augment mm. what you're doing now? I mean, does it or? Uh, oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, business is business. It doesn't matter whether you're um, in retail or wholesale or distri distribution or home services or in a band. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to learn the business part of what what's going on yeah. uh, to be successful. Again, learn what, what uh, works and what doesn't work. And there's certainly a lot of opportunities that with uh, being in a band. And you're still playing, so it, oh, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's the fun element, I suppose. Uh, sure, or yeah. You wouldn't I, be here if it weren't. Well, fun. I, <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to. Okay, I'm done with this now. You oh, know, yeah, a few yeah, times yeah. throughout right. my life, and uh, it just doesn't work. No, it doesn't. Uh, it, so now, what I do is I do some freelance work, some fill in. Uh, people will call me, and they need a bass player, a keyboard player, and I'll go out and uh, and do the gig with them just to save the gig. Um, you know, as opposed to you know, our keyboard player is sick. We're going to have to cancel the gig. So you know how tough it is to get that gig to oh, begin yeah. with. So that's what I do. But I also have a bit of a studio set up in my garage. Well, and have yeah, that's another thing you can do nowadays. Yeah, yeah. You can set up a nice studio with yeah. just a computer and some software and a couple yeah. of good mics, and you're <laughs> off, and, off and running. That's exactly it. Yeah. And, uh, I've been very fortunate because I had the day gig and, the, and the, uh, a good music gig uh, more years than not that I could take that money that I made from a gig and put it right back into equipment or you know mad money as yeah well. i have the mad money fun too <laughs> uh but what that, that's the other thing the whole music industry as far as professionalism has changed over the years record companies aren't promoting artists so you got to promote yourself pretty much uh, yeah and even playing in clubs and things locally uh now the club owners are saying well you have to you have to put out there that you're playing or you have to help us with our advertising. Sure. And some musicians say, ah, we don't want to do that because that's not our job. Well, it kind of is. Yeah. Uh, things yeah. have morphed a little bit and, you know, it, bo it takes both parties to uh, to promote live music. Oh, know? yeah. I, again, like I said, in my mid-20s, I kind of learned that this is a business. And, yeah. um, it, and what I think has happened in recent years with the entire music business is that it's taken that hustle kind of mentality that it takes for a local band and has pushed that through the whole way through the ranks that yeah. even national touring acts um, you know not the ones that are selling out stadiums but uh, the ones that are on tour to the theaters there's a there's a large number of those acts it's a hustle and these oh, yeah. people have to work every day oh, yeah. you know on all the aspects of a touring band to right. make it work and, mm -hmm. and make sure that they're making a living well this is a real pleasure talking to you know I kind of leave it to the end to uh, ask you what are some of the memorable memorable gigs that you played or anything fun that you can relate uh, mm. to, to the general populace here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, have you anything like that or, or you just have fun across the board? Oh, definitely fun across the board. Um, I think just about every gig that was well attended and the dance floor was filled was a memorable or a memorable, you know, thing and you just want to keep adding to that yeah those um, but um, I, I guess one of the things that I really enjoyed you know being at this stage in our in our lives and career and you look back was how fortunate we were uh, like I said I played in a band called Radio Days and mm -hmm. we had a steady gig at the Crown Plaza which then was the Sheraton yeah and we did uh, uh, Friday and Saturday nights once a month for probably five or six years. Nice. And uh, tourism was up in Berks County. Mm -hmm. The outlets were firing on all cylinders, and these busloads of people would come in and spend a weekend here. <coughs> and we just had so many great nights there with, you know, capacity crowd in that good nights lounge. Yeah. And uh, yeah, those are the things I look back on. And, and why did you do it, or why do you keep doing it? Well, it's for a full dance floor. And well, and if I recall, your mixture of songs was 
pretty across the board too. <laughs> you, you did uh, all types of songs, which it keeps everybody. Yeah, happy. we did everything from Frank Sinatra to uh, <laughs> Stevie Ray Vaughan, you yeah. know, and everything in between, uh, and and tried to you know uh, throw some pop tunes in, current pop tunes yeah. at the time, uh, for whatever year we were in. Yeah, and it lasted twenty years, so it, it was a good run for that yeah, band. It's a good but, run. Um, and good people in the band as well. Oh yeah, and, and you get still to around be, playing. You, you know? get to be family and in a brotherhood, you know, when you're in a band with guys, and uh, you spend um, a fair amount of years with the same guys in the band you become, you go, you live through all your lives together, yeah. and everything that happens, the marriages, the divorces, the kids, everything, it, yeah. you know, it's uh, it kind of like within your family of the band. And even with bands, it's kind of break up sometime, it's like, I can't stand this, <laughs> you know, the, you know, and you get away from it for a while, and like you said, mm -hmm. not not a long while. You know, you want to get back into it again. Oh, right, it, right. It's, yeah. it, it's a gang. Uh, you know, yeah. you want to hang with the gang, so to speak. Yep. Well, it was great talking to you. Oh, and, it was, and, thank and, you for having and, me. And, uh, you know, this, thanks for being a part of uh, musical history at oh, Berks County. It's been quite a ride in this area. Thank you.